You're very welcome to our special episode of Treaty Talk, the 2023 Limerick Senior Football Championship Preview. Myself, Jack Neville, and Matt O'Callaghan of the Weekly Observer and Vale Star. Matt, with the inter-county action still ongoing for the hurlers and the footballers just after being eliminated a couple of days ago, the, the football championship has come along very quickly, hasn't it? It has, but I, I suppose, Jack, in fairness, the county board have it flagged a long way back. Um, mm. That e- e- even if we were to go into um, to get to the All Ireland final, which I hope we will, you know that um, the, the the overlap isn't great. Like that, uh, the, the, there's actually no overlap with the senior um, with, with, with players involved. Um, it's 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 in the inter- at intermediate level. It gets tricky because you have Garoad Hegarty with St Patrick's. You have um, Seamus Flanagan with newly promoted. Um, Castle Mahan, That's and fine. then you've Cahal O'Neill with Krakora Manister. So, but I, I, I see from the, the initial fixture list that we got, and you've probably seen it yourself, Jack, um, that the county board have made contingencies for that. So, um, um, and they're going to play as many games as they can up till then, and where these teams will become become involved depending on Limerick's progress in 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 in, in the championship. Yeah, we may not see any of those three teams, and of course, we hope it will be the situation until the end of July. Um, yeah. Uh, in the, um, they're, they're penciled in to play football in the e- immediate aftermath of the All Ireland final, should we get there. So, um, I, I, I presume they won't mind being called upon a week after the, after hopefully we'll have completed four in a row, Jack. Yeah, that that is the thing. But I suppose we will be focusing today on the on the senior championship. Um, it looks like it's going to be a championship that will be run off without any interruptions, as you mentioned there. Like the the, the hurlers going well will interrupt some other championships. But we'll stick with the senior today, Matt. And again, before we get rightly into it, judging from especially Newcastle West last year getting to a Munster final and just losing out to Cairns Rallies, and you have an appear Michigan senior again this year that got to. A Munster Intermediate final and Castle Mahan lost the Fossa and I think there's a lot of senior teams around that would have lost the Fossa but the the grand scheme of things where do you see Limerick football coming into this year in terms of club football? Well I I, I would be excited uh, um, about the about the forthcoming se- um, football championships and as 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 you rightly said there you must remember that um our, our junior champions of last year, Castle Mahan, were beaten by Fossa, who went on to win the All Ireland final. Mm. Yeah. And um, then the Piercy, who beat Ron Moore and Ballina, and I was at it. And as you reminded me just off air there a while ago, that I described it as one of the worst games I ever saw. But I, I did qualify it by saying that um, semi finals are all about winning. But um, yeah. the Piercy the were. Um, Re- reached the monster final, and and um, uh, they were beaten by Ratmore, who subsequently went on also and won the All Ireland final. So, and then, of course, then you had the Newcastle West situation. Um, like the odds were stacked against Newcastle West, um, going going to Torles as it turned out to be. Um, that that um, Clonmel Commercials uh, cha- changed the venue. I whether it was. I don't know whether it was out of a certain level of confidence or what it was, but um, Newcastle West came away with the win and were desperate, desperate, unlucky against Governor Rallies in 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 the final. You you you'd, you'd have to say that um, Newcastle West are edging oh so close, Jack, uh, to putting off one of those monster championships. Which, in fairness, I suppose, and um, uh, that that the um, that you know over the recent years. Um, it, it, it wouldn't be anything more than they deserve uh, because no. like they have been a dominant force um, and they, they, they and I know we'll be talking about them in greater length in a minute but um, they, they, they you, you know Newcastle West broke new ground next, last year um, well, by completing first ever back to back titles in Limerick um, so um, um, you, you know I I, I I, I I thought you know if 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 you take it at face value, um, uh, our, our, our top football is in, in 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 a good place, but I'd have to qualify it, Jack, by by saying like that, you know I think there's a there's a certain level of inequity in the monsters 
club's championship. Not at senior level, perhaps, but definitely at intermediate and junior level. Because you need only take a quick glance at at the um, at the roll of honour in both of those competitions and see the level of dominance enjoyed by Kerry clubs. And it's look, I I'm not criticising Kerry or Kerry clubs for it, but it, it it is the structure of the championship in 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 Kerry um, yeah. that that is producing these strong teams. And I, I think it's it, it's it's something for a bigger forum and a wider debate that if 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 you are to have a provincial championship, um, and you know I, I I don't know what the answer to it is, um, uh, it's it's certainly above my pay, pay grade, but like you have to have a level of playing field. You yeah, know, I think uniformity um, across the counties that they all play yes. with whatever it be eight or twelve or sixteen teams they all play. The same way, but look, that's for down the line. The Munster Championship will yeah. be focusing on the, the Limerick one. And before we get into the teams themselves, the groups, for me, I think it's very important the teams get off to a good start because there, there, there will be a level of, you, you might have seen a hurdles come back in team, but a lot of teams will have lads playing hurling down the line. So the way it goes, there'll be two rounds of football and then the, the All-Ireland, hopefully, um, and then the hurling will kick off. And then it's pretty much... Eight to ten weeks in a row for that lads. If you get into knockout stages, you're on the road for the bones of four or five months. That this is probably the best chance you will get to hit. Like you, you have to hit the ground running. But there is that scope there to start well. Um, with the day, the way things are laid out. Yeah, you're absolutely right, Jack. Ab- 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 absolutely right. And I, I suppose, um, this continuous and we had in we had cases of it last year, and I think we flagged them here of certain players. That were involved. I think there was one player involved ten weeks in a row. Or um, certainly brought it to my attention about being ten weeks playing ten weeks in a row anyway. And um, but maybe that's one of the downsides of the split season. And you you you, you have to weigh that up against um, you know the chorus of criticism that was about the previous um, system, whereby you had two rounds in April and then you didn't resume hostilities again until August. And um, yeah. like that, that was unsatisfactory too. So I don't, I don't know where you find a happy medium, but you, you're right in when you say that um, the, the the footballers are getting a couple of weeks um, uh, to to, so, to focus solely on the football, and it, it, it's sort of you know to use the cliche, it's 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 important that you make hay while the sun shines, while oh, there is not too much too much. Uh, there, there are not too many calls on your players, but but I I, I have noticed like we 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 have three we have three dual clubs um, in the Pearshig Adair and and Kildaimo Palace Kenry. In, in the cases of of the Pearshig and Adair, happily for them, that there, there isn't a great overlap of 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 dual players. The same can be said for Kildaimo Palace Kenry because. They seem to have a lot of key players who are key in football and key in hurling. So the challenge for them will probably be that bit greater. But it, look, for, for dual players, Jack, it, 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 it's a challenge all round. That, 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 there's no question about that. Yeah, you also have um, Mona Lean now as well, dual senior, after getting promoted. Oh, sorry, you have. So, you like, have. yeah, no, you make, you make a very valid point, but... Yeah, it's important to get off to a good start in anything you do, and this mm-hmm. this championship will be no different. But we'll get into it. We'll but before go you go there, Jack, I, I would put Mona Lean in the same basket as Napiershik and um and and the Dare. They don't have a great overlap. Now I I I I, I have here uh, the, the 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 Mona Lean team that that faced um uh, St Kieran's in the league final this week, and uh, there, there is little or no overlap with the hurlers because the first thing I looked for because. Um, you, you, you know, when, when we come to talk about the hurling championship, we, we, you know, we tend to focus on, 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 on the promoted teams and, and how they might settle into their new environment. So, um, yeah, um, I, the, the whole jewel thing, I think, is a bigger challenge probably for Kildaimo Palace Kenry than the other three, Jack. Oh, definitely. Um, they've done well with us, um, to be fair to them. In, in recent times, and they'll be hoping for the same in, in their second year of the senior. But we'll move 
into Group 1, Matt, and just to run through the teams um, as it's here in front of me. Ula, Gilliam Palace, Kenry, St. Kieran's, Newcastle West, Clahan, and Father Casey's. The obvious team in the group is Newcastle West. They are coming in, in into the championship as the champions. Two in a row champions. They achieved that for the first time last year. They'll obviously be looking to make it a three in a row. As we said, they got to a Munster final. They're blessed with a huge, talented squad. Some excellent individual players um their favorites to win it in the eyes of the bookies without giving away who you think is going to win the championship like you would really expect newcastle to to probably top the group get the semi-final and it's it's just hard to see past them really it is very hard to see past them jack um uh, they're they're obviously in a new space and um you know you know they, they they broke that ceiling last year that last ceiling last year when um you know, something that had tantalizing in them. They eluded them once or twice in the past, which was putting back-to-back -back titles together. So, they, they, as it were, they have that monkey off their back. But um, New, Newcastle West, you know, got to the Munster final last year, Jack. Uh, they won the county final, first of all, and got to the Munster final for a reason. Um, because they're, they're, they're blessed with a very, very strong, very, very strong squad, you would have to say because mm. uh, I, I, I was looking there a couple of times last year and I covered an awful lot of Newcastle West matches. And, and um, uh, you, you, you'd look in awe at, 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 at their bench and the options that Jimmy Lee and his management team had when, when, it, when it came to, um, uh, you know, raiding the bench, which they did very, very successfully and very judiciously during the, the course of the championship. And, and none, none more so like than than in the um, in the semi final, if you recall, against Mona Lee, when they were able to spring Dermot Kelly from the bench uh, to get the goal that in the end proved crucial. Um, so like we hear John Kiley all the time um, lauding about the the importance or stressing the importance of the strength of your bench um, to be successful. You know, I I I I I, I think um, Newcastle West in many ways are a carbon copy of that. And like looking at Newcastle West, um, um, looking at Newcastle West and Saint and Father Casey's together side by side, um, and not because they're meeting in the first round, Jack, but they have similar um, they have, they have similarities um, in in terms of success at underage level, at minor and under twenty le twenty one level, but the similarity yeah. ends there. In, in that Newcastle West seemed to be more adept at bringing the young players through. Now, I, I yeah. thought I saw signs, and we, we've said this every every year, you know, when are father cases with so much success at under age level, when are they going to explode onto the scene, you know, at senior level? I thought I saw more than little signs of it last year, Jack. Um um, that, that 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 they were doing so, but well, you, you know, getting back to to, to Newcastle West, um, they are the masters of bringing them through, and you you know the the names roll off year and year and year, and and um, they 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 keep freshening it up, you know, very 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 wisely, and um, and 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 bringing these players through, and um, I yeah I agree with you totally. It's it's very very hard, um. To, to, to see beyond Newcastle West. Um, I, topping the group? Um, I don't know, but I'd say they, they probably don't care once they once they get out of it. But um, yeah, I, 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 think say, I, I think they'll certainly I'd, come out of the group. Yeah, I'd say the teams on the other side of the group would be happy to, to see them go straight into the semi-finals and yeah. avoid them for a while yet. Um, you mentioned Father Casey's there as well. That good year last year broke that kind of hoodoo over the quarterfinals. Um, mm -hmm. They probably should have beaten Adair that, that semi-final and set up a rematch in the final. Now, I know Father Casey's are down a lot of bodies. They have lads travelling away. and We won't get into, the I suppose, rumours about certain fellas going away, but Mark Fitzgerald even mentioned that there are lads leaving from the senior panel, and that applies across both groups. We won't get into that, but Father Casey's do need all hands on deck. When you look at the rest of the group, you probably say they would be fine um, without a full hand, but it, it, it's 
it's hard to see him replicating last year's form if they are losing players. Yeah, well, I'm hearing the rumours of about about the players leaving as well, and it would appear um, that that fa- the father cases are going to be 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 pretty hard hit in 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 that regard. And um, I I certainly for one was looking forward um, to to father cases um, stepping on this year, you know, building on last year. I saw him during the groups. I I saw him. I think three times during the group stage just last year. And I saw two father cases. I saw the father mm. cases that was very, very, very good. And I saw the father cases that was poor. So there was a level of inconsistency there. And like I, I thought when they went into the quarter final, I was just wondering whether this quarter final hoodoo uh, would haunt him again. But no. And it was a it was a major step forward for father cases. And you must remember that it's 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 not that long ago since they were county champions, two thousand and six. You know, and um, they, 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 yeah, it's seventeen years. Yeah, seventeen years. Yeah, but they, they, in in terms of others, like it's 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 no length of time. But um, uh, I saw man once they got over the quarter final, like they they definitely went in into that game in Fina against the Dare with high hopes and. And you know, in 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 the first quarter of an hour, they were ir- ir- irresistible. You know, and um, you, the unfortunately thing for them that um, the, the the inconsistency that 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 was bugging them from game to game suddenly, you know, came back and attacked them within one game, and and um, Adair took over after that, and and won 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 quite comfortably. But you know. I, I honestly believe that it might be only a blip, but and that we would see um, um, that we would see that um, uh, we, we would see an improvement in 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 in, in um, Father Casey's. Now, like as you said, the, 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 there is rumours abounding about players leaving Father Casey's and not leaving Father Casey's, but um, um, you know have contacted have contacted have contacted the travel bug like uh, other people that I know and um <laughs> and looking at no one in this cast but um um you know they, yeah, they're going to, they the, had names, a great... the, 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 the names Jack that I mentioned are a huge going to be a huge loss and you know like I suppose a well known Karma Roach and possibly Eddie Adrian in right like massive massive players you know yeah, um mm. You know, Huge losses for, for Father Casey's. And moving on then into the other standout team in the group, I suppose, is saying when you take teams that reached the knockout stages last year, um, that there's four of them in this in this group, in Casey's, Newcastle, Kieran's, and Lion Palace Kennery. But moving into the St. Kieran's, who were the league champions, they beat Moon the other night. I saw them against Galtic Gales about a fortnight ago, and I thought they were really, really good. We played them in the league as well, and they were good that day, but they were very good. Against Celtic Gales, they have Derek Tracy in midfield. You know, it's shown why he was an intercounty midfielder for 10, 12 years. He definitely could have played with Limerick this year. They have uh, Alan Daly coming in from Ula, which is a huge loss for Ula. We'll get to that in a minute. Um, young lads like John Hayes, Liam Kendi, Dylan Maloney, these boys, and a really solid defence. You always get that for Kieran, but they seem to have an attacking flair about them this year. And for me, they're the team with Newcastle in this group to watch. And I wouldn't be. Surprised to see him topping the group. They start with Ula um, on Saturday. But what's your read on Kieran so far this year? Well, I saw him last year and I thought they were an egg about to be hatched, you know. Um, uh, I, I saw him last year and um, um, I, 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 I saw him in the group stages and I was hugely impressed with him. And I saw him in the knockout stages and I was hugely disappointed with him. Um, they, 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 I, I think that's a fair assessment. But um, yeah. their, their early season performance in the group seemed to have um, uh, tapered off because um, they, 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 I think they had six points up after three games, and then they, they had a, cra- a draw with a crowd called Bally Steen, um, if you know that who they are, and um, uh, then they lost to there in the final round. And apparently, the, from what I saw, I was in Brough the day they were beaten in the quarter final, and I was hugely disappointed, Jack, with with their performance. They were beaten nine points to six by by um, by Mona Lee, and and um, 
it, it, it was a day in which I was expecting an awful lot more from, from St. Kieran's, but um, it, 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 it certainly didn't put me off in, in the sense that it didn't put me off my belief uh, uh, that, 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 that uh, you know, that better days were around the corner for St. Kieran's. Now, they, 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 they were conflicted last year with, with um, trying to marry a very, very successful hurling campaign with a football campaign. And yeah, um, true. maybe maybe that took its toll, but they, you know they're going to have the same problem um, this year because they, they'll be moving up to intermediate grade in the hurling. And um, but I, I I think there's something about that football team, about the Saint Kieran's football team, um, that 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 it's waiting to happen. And that's why Jack, when you asked me about Newcastle West and when you were so bullish about their their finishing top of the table, that I, I didn't share your bullishness. For, for the simple reason that I think there's a chance that St. Kieran's might be the team that might top the group now. And and I'm not reading too much into their recent league performance, Jack. No, they, yeah. they, they had a very, very good good league campaign which culminated in, in winning the league. No, which is which which is which is a major a major boost going into the championship. And mm. um, they, they 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 won it impressively. Now you you referenced Alan Daly there. Uh, this this lad is an exceptionally good footballer, Jack. I saw him a number of times last year with Ula. Um, he's he's a native of Wicklow, and um, uh, you know uh, Ula's loss is certainly Saint Kieran's gain. He's you know um, uh, any club that will get a player like him in, you know it's 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 a, it's a lucky day. You know your your you, your Christmas is coming early. Um, He's an yeah. exception. It gives him that inside. Good. It gives him that inside forward that they no, they have they have good forwards. Um, the likes of Noel Callan and Shane Smangin them, but he's just an out and out yeah. scorer. You know, it gives him it's another an fellow yeah. bow. And you know, and I don't yeah, want to move. Got, I, I don't want to move on from teams too quickly. But we will. We will keep running. It, it ties but, uh, into just, just, just finishing on Alan Daly. He scored one two in the league final. Yeah, well, he scored. He, he was five. I'd he was consistent. Him. He was consistent. He was consistent last year for Ula. Like him, um, get the ball to Alan Daly, and and um, it's it, it, it can spell trouble for the opposition. But yeah, I, I as I say, I was impressed and unimpressed with Saint Kieran's last year. Unimpressed with the way they performed in the quarter final, and speaking to the Saint Kieran's <coughs> lads after. Like they, they, they were forced to put their hands up and say we just didn't perform on the day, you know. But um, yeah. I, I think there are better days ahead for St. Cairns and that's that's my reluctance to say, you know, that Newcastle West may finish top of the table. Yeah, and I don't want to run through. I'd, I'd love to go through every team in detail. We did say we'd try and keep this uh, like you know sharp as possible. So if Casey's Newcastle and Cairns, you know, they are the obvious front runners for the group. That means Ula, Clahan, and Kadayan Palace Kenry, you know, are, are not only trying to upset that odds, but are battling to avoid the bottom of the table. And Clahan are playing Kadayan Palace in the first round. And you'd imagine whoever wins that game is immediately looking up. You know, they can probably say they're safe after one game and look to upset the odds. Kildayan did it last year, getting into the quarterfinal their first year. Clahan in their first year, the previous year, got there. And Ula were in a final in only 2019, like, to be fair. So, on those three teams, Matt, you know, which do you think is the most likely to upset the status quo in Group uh, 1? Well, you know, you, you never you never know what Clahan will come up with. Like, they, they, yeah. have, a, they, have, a great, they have a great tradition of, of football in Clahan and... We, 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 we've seen Clahan e even in recent years. You know, they, they've proved they've proved quite difficult customers to get over. And um, mm. um, I, I would be very low to um, to write off Clahan's chances of all the three. Now, Kildare yeah. Palace Henry <coughs> will be facing the second year syndrome, mm. and. Um, uh, it it would be interesting to see can they can they pick up up on it, and the, 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 at the outset of our conversation, Jack, we were talking about the importance of a very very good start, and we also mentioned that that Kildaimo will probably be more impacted with with um, uh, 
dual players than the than the other three um you know dual clubs so while the window of football is there it's going to be hugely important more important for Kildaimo than anybody you know to get points on the board yeah, now, and they have, they, they, they have were, a really were, good spine. Were, in... Yeah, they were tremendous last year. You know, they were really, really tremendous. What they achieved last year was was, was phenomenal. Um, uh, you know, to get to the quarter final, and um, where they, where they lost to Father Cases, but um, you know that they're, they're 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 confronted this year, Jack, as well with 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 their senior hurling team moving up to the A group in the, in the senior hurling championship and yeah, whether that will impact be. or not no they very very successfully um managed both codes last year and um um yeah Kildama Palace can are going to be be difficult to beat um like you, you you saw the kind of if if you take Limerick's league performance and Limerick's Limerick's year you 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 take the form of Peter Nash that we have seen and uh, we saw last year how important and Nashi was to the team, but um, we, 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 we've seen the emergence during the year, and um, you know sometimes um, the, 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 these games and tight games and um, can can you know revolve around the performance of one or two individuals in a game, and um, we, we've seen the emergence of Cahal Downs as, as a senior as a serious intercounty footballer. You know, yeah, so they, they, they are a couple of pluses for, for, for Kildama Palace can right now. Ula, <coughs> I saw yeah, him Ula, recently. obviously, when you're talking about Ula, you know, you just continue to send your best wishes to Josh Ryan because he's lit up the championship and he's played unbelievable for Limerick as well in recent years. And it, it doesn't seem like he'll he'll be playing for Ula, which is a huge blow for them. So just best wishes to, to Josh first and foremost. And then obviously yeah. losing Alan Daly. They escaped relegation final on the last day last year. You know, they always have good players coming through, but it seems like it'll, it could be a tough year for Ula. Yeah, I, I saw him playing recently and I I, I I I was talking with Josh and talking about his situation and he he, he certainly won't be seen, I think, in the colours this year. And he's, he's actually involved with coaching the team at the moment. Um, yeah, I heard that. Ju- 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 during his recovery, now I, I I thought on the night that I saw him, they were quite poor. They were well overturned by Galtie Gales. Now they were down a number of key players on that particular night, and um, you know, but if 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 you take Josh and Alan Daly out of the out of the equation, you know, you you're really stripping them back a bit, and um, like they struggled, Jack. Um, they struggled during the, the the championship campaign last year. They lost the first four, and then they only avoided relegation by a win in the final round against Galbley. Had they lost that, they would have been into the relegation final. So, like they they, they have to re it, it it it's not too long ago since they went through the group stages unbeaten when they got yeah, to the county the final in twenty nineteen. You know, maybe it's four years ago, right? But um, they, they, you know, and some of those players and some of those key players are still around. But I, I, I think it's going to be a bit of a struggle for Ula, and um, it, it's, it's not the ideal situation for Ula in the position that they're in at the moment to face the newly crowned league champions and facing one of their key players in the opposition colours. You know, it, it does, yeah. it doesn't make a good mix. But um, it, it looks uh, it's like it'll be tough for them. Yeah, it looks as if but, it will be tough for them. Yeah. If you if you had to call your three to get out of Group One, who would they be? I, I think I, I you know I, I I put a lot of thought into it now, and I have I've been looking through it um, since we decided that we were having the podcast today. And I, I find it very very hard to see beyond Newcastle West, St Kieran's, and Father Cases. Yeah, I I think I think it'll depend a lot on who who's actually around for um Father Casey's and I'd have a sneaking mm-hmm. suspicion for um for Kilima Palace Kennery just their firepower if they can manage to do the hurling and football again but we'll see how that goes and you couldn't write out Lahan or Ula either you couldn't write out any team but I think no, Kieran's no, no. and Newcastle would be locks for both of us in that regard yeah. to to get out of the group uh, um 
my dark horses in that group, Jack, and I, I, I've said it there in my earlier remarks, and I, I think it be gone. I, I, you, you just don't know what they're going, what, what they're going to come up with. And um, um, more than any other club, Clahan vary greater from year to year. You know, with players coming and players going, and um, but the Clahan tradition is always there. And um, um, to me, you, you know. Um, if we if, if we get the Clahan that we hope will turn up, they could be dark horses because like Gaelic Gaelic football, not just in Clahan but uh, and the city, but you know it, it Gaelic football in Limerick needs Clahan. They've contributed so much over the years. Yeah, you don't know what, what you're going to get, but it'll be exciting nonetheless. And going from from Group One into Group Two. Um, just running through the list there. Napier, she obviously intermediate champions at their last year, beating finalists, Bellistine, Bailanders, Galtigales, Gales, and Mona Lean. Um, you talk about Clahan, you know, from year to year, you, you do not expect Mona Lean for me kind of fall in to that bracket as well, Matt. And, you know, they reached the league final. They have a, a couple of new faces in the team. Um, I think they're, I think they're from Kerry. I'd heard about them. Earlier on the year, I think they were playing in that league final against Kieran Stuckru, I think is their their name. Excuse my pronunciation, but Mona Lean looked like a team that could uh, launch an assault on the championship. They haven't won since 2016. Um, their last team outside of Adair Newcastle to win the championship. Um, they've reached three semi-finals in a row, if not four, and they were beaten narrowly enough by Newcastle in the past two years. Um, you know, for me, they're they're definitely a team to watch this year, Mona Lean. Oh yeah, and Monlin are a team to watch every year, Jack. Um, mm. And um, you know, we we spoke about them being dual senior, but you know, they 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 they're a dual club every year. But um, the the overlap between hurling and football is getting less and less. There seem to be two independent republics there within the club, um, the hurling and uh, hurling and football. But um, yeah, I you know I, I saw. Him, I saw him a couple of times last year. I saw him in the quarter final, and I saw him in the semi final. And as as I said, um, it was a poor quarter final when they got over um, St Kieran's, who were playing very very poorly on the day, nine points to six. Um, but they were involved in probably the best game of the year in the semi final. Um, when 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 they went down, um, it was in Esteetan, wasn't it? Um, yeah, and they it went was. down one ten, one ten to ten points. Um, to Newcastle West, and and as, as I mentioned earlier during my remarks about Newcastle West, that um, it um, for Newcastle West to get over the line, it necessitated um, um, Dermot Kelly coming off the bench and getting that crucial goal. Um, actually, literally, I think it was actually an injury time. So, so. Um, that 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 will tell you how how near they were last year, and um, uh, obviously. Um, I, I I understand that the influx doesn't stop with two, Jack. I think it might be three or four that have come in. Um, I, I, I saw names. <laughs> I, I, I saw the, excuse my pronunciation, Irish is in my 40. Um, I saw the um, shoe cruise. Is it shoe cruise? Um, and there are so. two of them there. There's, there's yeah, a pair Tygen, of them there. Connor, I think. I'm not sure. Yeah. And um, there, there was one or other two names that I saw on the list that, um, that, that were weren't familiar to me, but Monlin had the habit of bringing these players through. Though you 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 have to say, you know, um, from from their underage ranks. So for, for that reason, they may not. But yeah, Monlin <coughs> Monlin are going to be contenders, Jack. They're going to be contenders for outright success. And um, before you ask me what three are coming out of the group, I'm telling you, in my opinion, Monlin are coming out of the group anyway. Yeah, I'll ask you for the but three. Having said, what, 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 having said that. They're not horrors, slow starters. Yeah, and they'll, you know, they'll have to, if, if they'll have to back, start quick. If, if you look back during the, the years, you know, they have got off to a slow start in the campaign and start to build into the campaign. But I'm factoring that in, Jack. Yeah, they're they're four to one to win it. We'll say uh, Adair are three to one. Or sorry, Newcastle are seven to four. A day or eleven to four, and Mon Lean are next at four to one. You've guessed the five, and then Kieran's at twelve, and then there's a whole host of twenty. But they are 
perennial contenders, but they are facing the team that they'll they'll probably battle out for group honours um, a day or in the first round next Friday in Brough. That looks to be a mouthwatering contest. But Adair have lost the last two finals. They, they won it in 20, they won it in 18, they won it in 17. So on one occasion, they've missed the final since getting promoted back in 2016. And when you look at, they probably should have beaten Newcastle last year in the final. They were without Hugh Burke, Owen Ryan, Owen Costello, and, and a couple of more, and they still should have won the county. Like, very hard to to not have Adair as again as one of the main contenders, to, if not the contender to Newcastle Strong. Oh yeah, absolutely, Jack. Absolutely. Um, I, you know, the, the the way they go about their business, like I, I saw them in the semi final last year, as I said against them. Um, I saw him a number of times last year, but in the semi-final, um, uh, you know, when they were hit by a barnstorming start uh, by by Father Casey's, and you know, the panic isn't in their lexicon back down there in the dare. Um, they just patiently got into the game and drove on, and and were comfortable winners in the end. Um, ah, look, you, you were looking at that panel and looking at that experience and looking what they have achieved with since uh, they like Napierschik. Went, went down and came back up at, at the first attempt. Uh, you must remember back in, was it 2016, 2017? 2016, and what they've achieved they since. Yeah. Um, uh, what they've achieved since, Jack, is, is simply phenomenal. And like, they, they, they've this team built on two Premier Under 21 football championship successes. And um, in many ways, it mirrors the Limerick team. Uh, the Limerick Singing Holland team, if you like, as to how they were brought together and put together. And, um, like, they, 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 they were winning county championships, county senior championships, as a very, very young team. So now that young team are still around. They're still not old. But in terms of football, you know, they're so vastly experienced. And... Um, we, that's that experience was laid bare actually in in the semi final last year. I know they came up short in the final because of of the players that they were down and all that. But Jack, um, you 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 ignore the threat of a dare at your peril. They're they're certainly going to be involved in the concluding stages, and they'll be one of the teams to have you you have to beat if you're going to if you if if you're going to take possession of the Father Casey Cup at the end of the year. Yeah, they're, they're always contenders and they should they should be stronger this year with definitely Hugh back and he was flying against Leash. So I mean there it again that 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 first round clash at Dare and Monoline, you could very easily envisage whoever wins that game going on to win their five games and booking their place in the semi final. But then look at the other four teams, and obviously I want Palestine to come out of it, and I think they will, and, and you'll be the same at Palestinians, but Palestine, Palestinians, Celtic Gales, and the Pierce, does seem to be a battle for that last place. It does. At, at, at this remove, you would have to say Monlin and Adair uh, uh, will take two of the three places. Jack, before you ask uh, me, don't uh, ask me who who will take the third. Well, I but will I, once you go I, through, you're, once you're, go through you're, the teams, I will be asking you. So. You're so persistent and insistent, I know that you will. So I'm I'm I half will. geared for it. Yeah, yeah we, Palestine. We um, go on. Palestine, um, you know, I, I look, um, I, 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 I think Palestine are in with a real chance of making it. You know, um, uh, like... I, I've criticised them in the past, maybe for not getting the results that their football deserved. Um, sure. And we, we saw them last we saw them last year at the back end of last year, Jack. And it, it pains me to remind you, but that that a very very good under twenty one A football team beat Ballylanders in 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 the county final down the there one night. And yeah, <coughs> they have a lot of those players coming through, and we saw we saw what. Um, David O'Shaughnessy in particular did with 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 um, uh, with him like on, under twenties and first of all in the Liam O'Connor Cup and subsequently in the Munster Championship and if, if you were a player of that caliber um, that that's able to score with that level of frequency uh, it it um, 
you're, you're, you're off to a bright start. But I, w- I was in very, very impressed with a lot of the young players who I'm sure Jack will be filtering onto the team this year. And, um, wait and see. you know, <laughs> this year is, you know, might be a year for those young players to make a statement. I, I, I think Palestine will be there or thereabouts. Um, no, they, 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 they're playing the Pearsick in the first round. Um, the Pearsick are going to come into the game with, with, a, with, a, with no little momentum. Um, because mm. I think they will probably, um, they will probably have parked, I would imagine, um, the result against Ratmore, and they will be more reflecting on the, on their performance in 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 the um in the, in the Limerick Championship, and um, that 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 certainly will give them and um, like Napier should play a beautiful style of football, and I've said that here and time and time again, and they're not prepared to sacrifice it, and that's why um we we uh, in in the monster semi final last year had uh, they sacrificed it and went on an arm wrestle instead of of continuing to play in football they, they you know they might they might have got on better but anyway they won the football match so it didn't matter but um the Pearsick are going to be no pushover jack they they they're, they're going to come into this championship with, with with momentum and they'll be saying to themselves look what they did went down one year yeah. came up the next year and we, 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 why can't we do the same? And they, 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 I, I actually think that no Pearsick have no overlap with the holding at all, have they? They well, oh, they'll have, they'll have, prim, they'll have primary to me this yeah. hurling to contend with, so they'll only be a step they down. Will, but there's no one playing. Will. There's no one playing no. for the, the, the Pearsick's first team so, in both courts. Yeah. But some of their key men will be playing primary to me to hurling, and I think for the Pearsick, they, they have two of the best footballers in the championship in. Gordon Brown, obviously, for Limerick, but I think Dylan Cronin must be one of the most underrated players in the county. It was yeah. phenomenal for him throughout the year. I don't know, did he get a call to come with Limerick and said no, or just didn't get the call? But for me, Dylan is a, is a brilliant player and one that could nearly pull the Pearsick through as he did intermediate last year. And, you know, you mentioned by the Landers already, Matt, and they've obviously a strong 21s team, got 21s final, probably some of the their older players are definitely entering the twilight of their career. But for me, Bell Landers are another team like that. You won't know what, what you're getting from them till you see them in the first round. And even when they're going poorly last year, they should have beaten Adair, you know, in the in the penultimate round last year. So again, Bell Landers, another team you couldn't rule out. No, and um like the last year, um they they kept a good wine to last last year, if you like. Um, in the penultimate round, as you rightly said, should have beaten Adair. Um, in the final round, beat Galti Gales. And um, it wasn't enough to stave off the relegation playoff. Um, but um, in the relegation playoff, they had a very good win and a comfortable win over Galbley. So, like... I, I, I've no doubt flirting with danger last year will be uppermost in their minds when they head into this year's campaign. Um, now, they haven't rooted up trees in the league, um, but, um, you know, all the focus is, is probably on the, on, on the championship. Now, um, just in case you didn't hear, Jack, they won the county junior A league final last night. They beat Mona Lean by a point, or, sorry, beat Mount Collins by a point after extra time. That after being six or seven points up at one stage in the second half, but um, it was a great, great game of football now. They and um, just for the listeners, there's a certain Kieran O'Callaghan around still, and he scored 11 points last night, which um, he, he's he's he, he's not gone off the map, you know. Oh, um, but yeah. Um, um, yeah, well, some of the, some of those players will, will 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 probably be making the step step up with with the others, and they they will have players, as you rightly said, from that under 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 twenty one team. So, yeah, Bally, Bally uh, you know, Bally last year, Jack should have beaten Adair, should definitely have beaten Saint Kieran's. Um, sorry, should have beaten Ballysteen, wasn't it? Um, one, one, no. Uh, one fight. no, that was the first round. But it seemed were definitely value for their money. And I know I was coming straight from Vegas to that game, but I think it was two nine to two three, and Bell Landers got two quick fire goals, and the boys kind of settled it. it I think it was St. Kieran's. I think, uh, or was it KP? Yeah, Did Saint... they miss a penalty? No, 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 no. no they were well beaten by St. They were well beaten by St. Kieran's. Now I'll, I'll answer it here. Um, 
it was it was Saint Kim's. Um, they they were. They um, missed the penalty, I think. They were, yeah, they were, but they were they were eight points up at one stage and didn't score again. Yeah, Saint like Kim's scored like one six. Yeah, by land there's another team like that, Matt. You just have to wait and see what you get. And then rounding out yeah. the 12 teams, well, I don't know, this is where the 12 team we get to, are Galti Gales. And we know all too well in Valley seeing what Galti Gales are about, have beaten us in both our championship games so far. Obviously backbone by the, the Childs and the McGraths and the Morris and Sullivans of this world. Really dangerous team, you know, on their day can be really, really good. And, you know, got to a semi-final two years ago. Um, probably took the eye off the ball last year against Battle Landers, had it in their own hands to get through, you know. So they'll be looking to get back to the knockout stages after a year away. They will, they will. And I, I, I've seen them this year. I saw them in the Southeast League final. I, th I thought they looked good to be coming together. Um, they were without a few key players that, that day. Like they... they Yes, they, they, there was only one McGrath playing. You mentioned the McGraths. Now Sean won't be playing at all this year, um, as, mm. as as he's he's in Australia. But Padraig, who was the captain, didn't didn't start but came on, and and made, made a big difference. Um, now Danny wasn't playing. So um, yeah, um, I, I I was impressed with the Gales and in in, in on, on on that particular that that particular day against against Ula, they really put them to the sword. But then they had a disappointing result against St. Kearns in the semi-final when they were turned over in Paddy Carroll Park in Ballygran. So where they're at, um, I, Jack, I, I have a tendency from experience over the years uh, for the most part to discount um, league form when it comes to the championship. And um, for that reason, um, I think that the the uh, the Gales will be a different animal when they when they'll when they'll come out in the championship. Um, uh, notwithstanding the fact that they won the South, but that uh, I think they will have, you know, got rid of that disappointing performance against them um, against them um, Saint Kieran's in the semi final. No, they they're playing Ballylanders in the first round, you know, and we've often said in the past that there's nothing better to focus. Newcastle West than 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 a game against um, Father Casey's. Um, nothing better to focus both Ballylanders and Galtie Gales than a game against each other. <coughs> when they met in the final round last year, Barry won it by a point. And yeah, that to me, out, really. Yeah, they did, and that to me uh, more reflects where the respective teams are at, rather than anything that happened in the league. Now, as I said, yeah. Sean Clancy, Sean, Sean um, McGrath is a huge right. loss at centre-back. Um, but Sean Clancy has deputised very, very well there. But um, Celtic Gales can be discounted, Jack. No, they can't. I don't think any team can be dis discounted across either group. But looking at group two, Matt, and I told you I'd come to it. So who will be the three to get out? Ah, uh, Mona Lean, Adair, yeah. and I have a hunch Belly Landers. Okay. Well, you all know where I'm going. Mona Lean, Adair, I mean, you know, Belly Steen. You know, it's not it's not out of a blind it's not out of a blind sense of loyalty. It's it's just that I think they're that 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 they're capable of. Obviously, I I, I want them to get out too. You know. Um, but um, yeah, I I, I think Bally might might do it. Uh, um, uh, Bally have a capacity, you, you know. Um, and if you if you look back over their record over the last couple of years, and this is what is conditioning my thinking, um, you will see that when they had a near when they had a near miss or a flirtation with them, um, with, with disaster, which is relegation, that they invariably bounce back a much stronger and better outfit for it, and. I'm 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 hopeful that that will be the case on this occasion. Yeah, no, it's not didn't blind loyalty that we're going through. Just we 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 feel like our clubs have gone through it. So hopefully, one hopefully I'll be right, friend. For your sake, hopefully you will be right. Um, before I'm going to ask you who's going to win the championship as well, so you can get ready for that. But before I do, and I I didn't tell you this was coming now, but one player from either group 
that you're looking forward to seeing. Maybe you saw him at Limerick and you want to see what they're like with their club or their young player or whatever. So I'll just go through the, the groups again. So in Group 1, we have Ula, Kildama Palace, Kennery, St. Kieran's, Newcastle West, Clahan, and Father Casey's. One player from a... Uh, from that set that you're looking forward to or I can start if you want well one player that that excites me and um, um, there's there's a couple of players Jack and uh, if, 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 you, if you if you afford me the liberty um, yeah I I, I, I I will say so I'm very much looking forward to John Hayes of St. Kieran's Sigerson you know yeah I you know I, I think there's huge potential there I'm really looking forward to him at Richter, um, yeah. with, with with Newcastle West. I I think this this guy is is you know I I think he's the real deal coming coming through, and yeah. um, I'm a big fan, Jack, and I always like watching Peter Nash at work. Yeah, and you know it's. He's always been exceptionally good at, and in the club level, but even this year in the county, he seems to have taken his game to a new yeah. level. So that bodes well. And definitely, I, 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 I would I would also like to mention, of course, um, a player who, who, who the utmost admiration for, who has been abs- who has lit up the championship for the last two years, is Keen Sheehan. Yeah, oh, um, yeah, Keen has been phenomenal. Now, whether he'll be there or not is is the other question. Again, he's one of yeah, the yeah, yeah, that's why I didn't mention him at the outset. Is I understand that there might be some doubts. Yeah, well, we'll know. We'll know on Thursday whether he's around. He could be going holidays. You know, he had, he had a long campaign. He got some like I suppose Keane, in Corbett, um, Ruan O'Connor have gone straight. Even Ruan straight from twenties last year all the way through to Munster final. Then on to win and um or in, and then into the Limerick setup. So they've been going for a while, so they deserve a break. For me, looking at that group, Tara Tracy, I think, has been really good for Kieran's in the league. And it'd be great to see him, you know, after missing out with Limerick. And Carl Downs is another one. So the midfielders there, you know, the likes of Emmett Rigter, Carl Downs, uh Dara Tracy, I think are the midfield battle in that group alone will be definitely worth one to keep an eye on. Um and then into Group 2, Matt, Napierci, Adair, Palestine, Fellanders, Galtic Gales, and Mona Lean. A couple from there that you're, I suppose, looking forward to, to seeing in, for their clubs. Um, no, look, uh, I always like look forward to, to Danny Froon because um, <clears throat> you don't know what's going to happen. He's 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 absolutely explosive. Um, player that I, I have great admiration for and I think he's in a rich reign of form early in this year, and you know it's 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 ominous for the opposition, but good for Galtie Gales, and that's big Tom Childs at midfield. I think he's, I, I, I think he's 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 a great footballer. If you'll indulge me and allow me, raid your own club for um uh, for David <laughs> for no, David O'Shaughnessy. <coughs> um, I I think this is the year which David O'Shaughnessy. Will 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 probably make a, a, a statement at senior level, and um, uh, I, I never get tired of watching um, you work in full flight. Yeah, def- definitely. Um, well, Tavy was our top scorer last year, so if that wasn't standing up for you, I'd love to see what his statement would be. Hugh Burke obviously has been flying and is so good for there. Same, similar with Mikey Lyons for right there, I think is is always brilliant. Uh, Robbie uh, Childs. Yeah, but uh, Mikey must get honourable mention. He's he's simply Mikey is simply incredible. And yeah, he, I was he, he, he was my playing. Me, he won my me this. describing him uh, as a veteran. He'll probably twist my neck when he meets me next. But look, M- Mikey is such a crucial. He's such a crucial cog in the day. Absolutely, he's, he's yeah, Mikey's I've... just simply phenomenal, Jack. I was told to start the year that, that he not not by Mikey himself but by someone else that he wasn't playing for the year and how surprised I was to see him against Palestine the first round of the league and you know he's just ageless brilliant footballer um I mentioned Dylan Cronin already and for Galtic Gales Robbie Childs has been a real thorn in our side a couple of times and I just think he's a brilliant footballer and there's a load from Palestine that I'm looking forward to to seeing um hopefully make their mark starting next Thursday. But that was just a, a a slight segue so that you could think there, Matt, about uh, 
who will win the championship? Um, you told me that you think Newcastle, Kieran's Casey's, Adair Monlin and Bally Landers will be the six to make it out. So who will be the last team left standing? If they hadn't lost the players that they've lost, I would probably be saying Father Casey's. Maybe that their time has come. Okay. Um, but I, I've changed my mind about that. I, I think the last Cormac Roach, um, Cormac was a huge player for them last year. Um, and if, if the impending loss of Adrian Enright, you, you know what he brings to the table. Like, um, I, I, I think it's too much of a loss to carry. Um, you know, it, 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 it it won't affect them having a decent season. Um, but maybe they're past the stage of decent season now they need to deliver. Um, I think at the end of the day, it'll be Newcastle West. I think okay. G- Jimmy Lee has a level of consistency there. And, um, you know, it, it, you know, I think the three in a row and... I'm sure Jimmy, when we meet him on Monday evening, um, will will be uh, at pains to not talk about that. Yeah. But I think deep down, it might be, it might be a motivating factor. And the near miss in the Munster Championship last year, they will probably be saying to themselves, "Right, let's give it a right go this year." And who knows, we might go one better than Munster. I'm going for Newcastle West, Jack. Yeah, it's it's very hard to go against Newcastle West because they've been so consistent over the last few years. But I think the winner will come from Group Two. Um, who that'll be now? I I think it'll be a Dare Monlina Ballystine getting out. I'd love to see Ballystine win a county. Um, I think a Dare like have to be better than last year. You know, with those boys coming back. But what I'm hearing about Monaline and what you said about them. And if they can build up ahead of steam, they can be so hard. And I saw them in 2016 at the fullest of flights, and they absolutely destroyed us in Carina. I just think there's the Brian Donovan, who is a really unique player, Limerick. He's speed alone and direct running is extremely hard to stop. They obviously have a brilliant Coley and Donald Sullivan, and so many good pieces around that. Not many hurdles. They have a few like like Luke Murphy and Ed Dial now will have to go between both, but they'll be fine doing that. There's something about Monoline over the last few days. Just get the sense that they could shock a few. Um, so I'm gonna go Monoline to win to win the championship. But watch watch me being wrong again and you being right as always going for your Newcastle West and the Pierce double. That works more often than not <laughs> between the senior hurling and senior football. But uh look, we're just excited to get going, Matt. Um Absolutely excited, and um, you know the games come ticking fast, and you have you have a full round of games. We will say over the first two weeks, and the same in intermediate and junior, and it gives us a feel for where clubs are really at. Like because in many ways, Jack, the the, the league is nothing more than shadow boxing, you know. And um, so I'm 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 just glad that this 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 all about to kick off. Now it means that you and I are going to be terrible busy, but. But um, should, should we like it no other way, Jack? So, yeah, you wouldn't, um, have it. you wouldn't have it any other way. No, no uh, so... Uh, first, the first round of so fixtures, I'm... just so everyone has them, uh, in Group 1, um, it's Casey's versus Newcastle West next Thursday in turn full at half seven. Ula versus Kearns and Clahan versus Callum Palace Kennery are on Saturday at half seven. The Ula game in Mungret and Clahan KP is in Clarina. In Group 2 next Thursday, Ballysteen versus Napierstig in Clarina at half seven. Celtic Gales by Landers Friday at half seven in Kilfinnan and Adair versus Monolin half seven in Brough next Friday. So it'll be interesting start to the championship. Hopefully our clubs will win it, but neither of us win for them. So we remain to be seen. But anyways, it's good to have the club championships back, Matt. Um, a huge thank you to you. We said we keep a chart and sweet. So for us, an hour in, in the worst. But uh, for us, it, it's over and out for the club championship preview.